Hello and welcome back to our sight detection video mini series. In this episode, we're going to carry on from where we left off and work on getting our UI tied to our AI so that the perception meter will increase and decrease. In, first of all, we're going to do an evaluation script. So what we're going to do is look at the uh, progress bar and look at what percentage it is, if it is uh, complete or whether it's empty. So we go to our site detection UI and we make a new function on here and I'm going to call this one evaluate site detection. And on here we're going to drag that into a branch. And on the branch we're going to be comparing this site value. Take the site value out and you're going to look at whether or not it is less than or equal to zero. We also want to check if we are going downwards, so if we are meant to be going down. So that would be if it has seen something, it's set to not true. Not boolean. And these both have to be true in order for us to evaluate this uh, branch in particular. So do and, and plug that in. So then put the and into the condition. And if that's true, we're going to go up here and do give. Now, give up was the code we, uh, the customer event, sorry, that we made, which basically closes this gate, so it stops the event dispatch from showing, and also hides the progress bar. So when the progress bar reaches zero, and it's meant to be going down that direction, then it will hide the progress bar and stop doing this. Okay, so next we need to check whether or not site value has reached the other side of it. So if that is all false, we're going to get the site value again, and check whether or not that is greater than or equal to. Uh, one. Now go into a branch as well. Plug it into the false of the first one. Okay, so what we're going to do on here is make it so it calls the NPC AI and tells them that hey, you've seen the player or hey, you've lost the player. So we're communicating back to the AI controller. Now for that, we go back to our AI controller here, and on here we need to make two events. If to make a custom event for scene player and another one for lost player. Okay. Go back to your compile that and go back to your UI. And on this site value percent is greater than one. Drag out your as enemy AI controller. And then you're going to call this scene player function. So what's going to happen here is the progress bar will Check well, first of all if it's going down and it reaches zero. If that's not the case, then it will go down and check whether or not the site value is either is greater than one. If that is the case, then we'll tell that AI controller, hey, I've seen the player, do your thing. Now we've also got lost player in there, and we're going to tie that to this give up here too. We're going to drag out as NPC controller, do lost player there. And that will tell it to basically stop chasing the player, wander off, go back to start, whatever you want it to do. Okay, so I'm going to hit compile and save there. And then we're going to go back to our event graph. At the end of this tick here, we're going to drag out that evaluate site detection. So, compile and save your work. We're done here. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to create a site curve. Now, a site curve is going to be used so that um, it, it have like a sort of a shape to how fast he detects you so it's not a constant rate based on how far away you are from him the site will change based on this curve we're going to create so for that we're going to go and go to our folder add go to miscellaneous and you should see curve and you'll choose the curve float let me call this one the site curve now curves are really useful in setting up um non-linear expression for our values so in here we're going to add a single point which is shift click or maybe just right click usually shift click what is it uh okay enter is add key they change it per thing it's weird anyway so add a key and we're going to set that one to be at a time of uh, zero and at a value of 0.5 up there 
Okay, you can add another point, and this point we're going to make is going to be at um going to be at one and zero point zero five. So there's our graph so far. So at the moment this is a constant linear progression. What I'm going to do is I make this more of a curve so that uh basically the further away you are, the 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 slower it will be. Okay. Um. So we're going to take both of these and go up top. Which says the A, which is auto. Can add these tangents for us. We'll leave it like that. Save, close that, and close that. I'm going to go to our AI controller here, and the AI is going to have a variable which is going to be that curve. So we go site curve, and be a type of curve. Float, hit compile, and then choose your site curve here. So if you, you could also do this with different enemies. So if enemies have better sight because they're like range enemies, you can change and tweak that curve so they are more likely to see you at distance rather than up close, for example. So anyway, we're using that. Um, I'm going to go up to here. And on here, we're going to take out our sight curve. Get, and from there, we're going to get a float value. Now the float value is going to come from a normalized point. Now the normalized point is going to come from our stimulus location and receiver location. We have a distance between the two. So I'm going to go distance and plug in the receiver into the second one there. So this is going to be the distance between the player and the AI. I'm going to normalize that to range, similar to how we did it in the one before. And the range is going to be set to the same range of our site, which is 500 in this case. And that return value will go into in time. So if we are at the 500 range, that means we'll be at 1. So if I go back to my curve, if I'm at 1 here, the rate of growth will be 0 0.05. Whereas if I'm up close, it'll be 0 0.5. Quite fast. So this will output the detection speed basically, and we're going to plug that into our full registered site ED. Okay, and we can use the exact same thing on our site detection uh, UI as well. Uh, so rather than multiply it by five here, we get rid of that. We'll add the site curve here. we don't even need to do that one we can just get it from our controller get controller get site curve and from there get float value and it's exactly the same plug that in there and that'll be a detection speed there i'll save okay so that should make it grow it shouldn't it won't do anything when it does grow, but uh, we should be able to at least see it in game. Ah, so it won't work. Uh, that's because I haven't set the pawn owner up here yet. So to do that, we go back to our enemy character. And on begin play, we're going to drag out that widget component. And then from there, get widget. And we're going to get the user widget object. And then from that, we can cast to our site detection why and then from that we can then set pawn owner to itself I'll save that so if I go into the game now see me see the bar will now increase the closer I get to him the more it'll Fast it'll grow. Okay. And if he loses sight of me, you see the bar down. Excuse me. It'll go up. Okay. So to show that it also contacts the AI controller as well, we'll go to the scene player here, the print string, do hello. So when the bar is filled up, it will shout out hello. Goes. 
There you go. Hello. Okay. So we now need to put on the hello code for our AI character. And we'll do that in the next episode. And that'll be the last episode of this mini series. If you want to watch that part right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can watch all of my content well before anyone else. Big shout out and thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for voting for this episode and showing your support for me. It really is amazing, so thank you so much. And if you happen to be watching this and you're not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button as I release videos all the time to so make sure you're always you know, getting aware of what's coming out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.